All right, so today I am at Serendipity Antiques and Artwork in North Syracuse. I've never taken you guys in here because I'm never around while they're open. But the kids are with their grandparents today, so I'm out shopping. <laughs> so let me see if he'll let me take some video in here while I shop, and I'll see you then. Oh, that set's gorgeous, the uranium glass set. I just saw that. <laughs> oh, that water set? Yeah. That's All right, so starting in this little unit, I did immediately see this little uh, Japanese vase with the Moriagi, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, but at 25, I was a little unsure if there was enough room there. Um... It is, it's a beautiful vase, and honestly, I went back and forth on this for quite some time um, before finally putting it back on the shelf and walking away. <laughs> uh, there's some teacups, a whole variety. Um, this is a nice shop because there's a huge variety of things in it. Um, anywhere between kind of like cottagey, um, true antiques, vintage there's some um, there's a bunch of ephemera there's um primitives there's a little bit of everything the only thing he doesn't have is anything really modern um i did see that little oh well that's right i was taking a peek at these iron horses because recently i'd been looking up um hagen renneker horses <laughs> and it made me think of them but those are all cast iron so i did love leave those behind because i didn't know much about them um, that owl was super cute. It had Mark Japan on the back. I debated it for a while, and eight dollars is a good price on it. Um, but to make a profit on it, I was just unsure um, with of the um, pro the margins on that one. Oh, uranium glass um, lamp there. And going in here, there's a whole bunch of old radios and electronics super cool looking and of course i zoomed right in on the fenton face <laughs> because um pink opalescent iridized hello um how can you go wrong with a peacock face and um it is a really good price too um but again it's just not quite enough room on it to where i would be comfortable with purchasing it for resale which is fine um it's one of those things where when I walk into an antique shop, I don't necessarily expect to see a lot of things I could pick up, pick up for resale uh, because they need to make a profit too. So when I go into antique shops, it's typically more to see what they have, what it's priced at, to actually pick things up and look at them, like this little Nippon dish. This is actually, it's marked Nippon, but it has a... Um, a uh, Noritake mark on it. The M stands for um, the uh, the Morion Brothers. Oh, the name eludes me. But uh, here's some Flow Blue. Uh, this amber decanter set was gorgeous. I wanted it kind of for myself. <laughs> and he had a lot of green depression too. Not a lot of it glowed. Um, so we're looking at like around wartime or post-war time. This is a very sweet little candy dish. It made me think Fenton, but it it is unmarked. And um, but it also doesn't glow. And at 15, again, a very good price, but just I wasn't I wasn't so so sure about it and I had a lot of similar pieces. I'm looking at this table. I got really excited when I saw those candles thinking they were mercury pick them up they were just painted <laughs> they're wax candles with a foil paint on them and this is actually a really nice piece and again the price very well uh, that um fire king jadeite and that will glow under black light or at least most of them do uh, i actually have one at home here i haven't put it in my inventory yet <laughs> um that's a really cool book the absolutely gorgeous graphics on it. It's a little beat up. It, it's seen better days, so that's why I didn't, like, touch it and open it. Uh, this set, I really liked it. 
but it did not have a price on it. I looked high and low for a price on that thing. And I was going to ask the shop owner and it completely slipped my mind. <laughs> so even though it was super cute set, I love the flowers on it with the gray. Hi. <laughs> Um, I just, I ended up leaving it behind because it slipped my mind. <laughs> and like I said, he has a, a wide variety. Um, so there's some EAPG up top there. Um, it also, again, priced very competitively. Um, nothing was, looking at all the prices in the shop, nothing was over the top. Nothing was, there was nothing crazy. Everything's just priced well. And that's a very pretty piece that you don't see very often. And, oh, I, I didn't even see that clear moon and stars there. I'm, I'm finding as I'm going through this footage, each time I watch it, I find something new that I'm like, oh, I wanted to, I should have looked at that. And I didn't see it while I was there because there, there's a lot in that shop. And, but I did see the amber one and I look at that. And that, those are some neat candlesticks. I like the pattern on them. But there, yeah, so I looked at the amber moon and stars. <laughs> I just completely missed the clear ones. <laughs> I like the look of this decanter too. From what I remember, I feel like there should have been like a cork ball sitting in the top of it. But um, I, maybe, maybe not. I, I'm not sure. And a pretty little bottle there too. Not sure what I'm looking at. Why I'm so focused in on this spot. I think I might have been looking at oh, I was getting out my <laughs> I was getting out my flashlight. <laughs> That's what I was doing. <laughs> oh, and this face up here too. Super cool shape. Um but I did check comps on it because I just wasn't sure. And I I think that the black might have been silver overlay. No, I think it was just black. But um, I'd found these online for around that price point and slightly above. But those all had patterns on them. I didn't find any that were that were blank like that. And this was really pretty, but I had a major, major break to it in a repair. So even though it could be loats like he has written on it, it's, it's way too broken. And the bowl next to it's really super pretty too. And I just honestly don't know enough about Loitz to say one way or the other, but oh, the color, oh, it's so pretty. It's like the deepest marigold you've ever seen with this like almost gold, gold green sheen underneath us. Oh, it's gorgeous in real life. So moving on into the next room, oh, I immediately zoom in on the Blanco. <clears throat> and again, a very good price. $45 is a great price for a piece of Blanco um, in this shape, especially. Um, but again, um, I'm looking for resale. My, <laughs> my goal is to not add things to my collection. Um, and it was a bit dirty on the inside and I've been having poor luck recently where if something just looks a little dirty, it ends up being sick glass. <laughs> and you can't really fix that. So I did end up leaving that behind. And here's a really pretty little urn style planter. Um, it, he said Roseville on there. And it, it, this is actually um, Robinson Ransbottom Pottery Company, which is in Roseville, Ohio. So a lot of people do get the get Roseville Pottery and RRP Co. mixed just because Robinson Rand's bottom has Roseville on the bottom because that's where they were. <laughs> Little McCoy Pottery Planter. That looked like a, um, a florist grade one, but usually those say Floraline on the bottom, so I was a little confused. A pretty little bowl, needed a little oil. It was a little dry. <laughs> pretty little painting or um a lithograph I'm assuming I did like that little round tiered table too oh and I see some over moon and stars so I have to make my way around to see to check out that compote again it's an amber color 
and scooching very carefully so I don't knock things off of all the tables. <laughs> and at 45, that's again a really good price for it, but it's just not quite the price point that I need it to be at. So now I'm looking at some of the artwork he has in this hallway. Um, this place is a little bit of a maze. Oh, and that, that is a gorgeous poster. And I, I really like the look of this one. Um, it's just a cute little print. Um, I love realistic paintings, like hyper-realistic. Oh, I love them. Um, so I did actually end up buying this for myself, and it's currently hanging next to my desk. <laughs> and just trying to see how old it is. Not still not quite sure, but I'm thinking it's probably 1970s um, with the um, bicentennial theme going on there. All right. Oh, that mountain scene was really cool, too. And there's some photography. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on the floor. Let me see. But first, let's look at what's on the wall. That one was actually pretty neat. I did like that that print. And that ink one was cool too. I like the the factory building, the old brick factory buildings. Now this velvet on the floor, um, there was some damage to the frame, so I didn't really consider that one. And there's some more empty frames. I really liked this cat painting. That was pretty cool. And that little fold was adorable too. That beach scene was really neat, but really not the style for my house. And when it comes to artwork, I, I tend not to ship. <laughs> and as you can see, there's just the, there's everything in every nook and cranny of this house. Um, and this little, oh, there's another one of those those urn planters. This one has a crack in it though. And that green bottle was kind of cool. And wow, look at that jardinier. That one's impressive. But a lot of really neat crockery in here and enamelware. And all oh, that vase was pretty, but wow, there was there was some major damage to the top lip of that. And the, the paint wasn't in the greatest condition either. That stone iron... <laughs> <laughs> the ironstone picture was very nice um had a lot of character to it some brown drip um it's i don't mind the brown brown drip it's one of those where you either love it or hate it so and those are neat um brass mortar and pestles and i did go back to look at the postcards um I don't usually deal in ephemera, so even though that that was really cute, I just, I don't know what they're going for. I, I need to do a bit of a deep dive and really see. I know it depends on the subject matter and that holidays tend to do better, but that's a pretty platter. I believe it's Stangle, but I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to do some learning when it comes to ephemera before I start buying it. I loved the shape of these shakers, but I had a feeling that the plastic, they are plastic, it was yellowed, and that wasn't the, intended to be the color. So I did leave those behind, even though $8 seemed like a pretty good price for them. Let's see, looking up in there, there's stuff hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> it's a little overwhelming. Um, oh. Bang. <laughs> I hit some of the stuff on the ceiling, but everything's fine. Everything that's hanging from the ceiling is metal. Oh, I didn't notice that blendo set up at the top. Oh, a whole bunch of shakers and little random things over on the on this wall. Um, I have bought some really cool um, like antique range, shank, range shakers from here before. They came off of this wall, so I'm trying to look really closely at the wall and what's on there. Um, there's a bunch of egg cups, uh, and I see the Tanala rooster. He's he's pretty cute. And let me see, 
that's a neat little cup but I, I think it by itself I don't I don't think it was quite worth it but like in the set I think it does really well because that that shape is kind of ringing a bell for me and over here and that um in this cabinet more salt and pepper shakers but there's no way I could reach them because I'm short and my arms don't reach that far <laughs> That's, I was almost at max reach, just trying to open the cabinets and look inside. <laughs> the man who runs the shop is is a bit taller than me, <laughs> so he has a bit more of a reach. I don't think he realizes. <laughs> These are really cute shakers, but it looks like they were missing their underplate. It looks like that had broken off, so I did leave that behind. Let me leave those, even though they were super cute. And this, I believe, was a... Um, a composite and I, yes I did go back for the fire king bowl I see it I'm, I'm grabbing it I'm, I'm trying to reach without making anything fall over got it five bucks yes I did I did purchase this <laughs> finally found something to purchase and it's a really good shape too I cleaned up nice and looking around, got my bowl, and I see this bowl, which makes me think McCoy pottery. And at 20, oh, what was it? Oh, sorry, 42. Uh, it, again, a really good price and a really neat bowl, but I just wasn't sure of it was unmarked and I wasn't hundred percent sure it was McCoy and but it had a great glaze. Oh look, there's a coffee carafe too. That's neat. I, I'm actually kicking myself now for not taking that out and looking at it. But look at this look at this print. I am absolutely in love with this. I really want to go back and buy this for my living room. Um it is two hundred dollars, but it's gorgeous. <laughs> And here is the room of bottles, which I believe used to be an enclosed front porch. This punch set is absolutely fabulous. I have been researching it since I left the shop, that shop, and I haven't been able to find it. This is also a really cool, you know what? Does that go with that cup I saw in the kitchen? Hmm. Now I have to look at my, my, <laughs> my footage again. I have to go back to this shop. I, I, there's so many things I missed. I really have to go back. <laughs> oh, those cute little toys and vases and bottles and all sorts of things. There's, there was just so much that it was like almost overwhelming. Oh, and I didn't even look at that Demitas set. Oh, and there's that phone. I didn't see that. Hello, Sylvester. And that was a pretty little pot. And oh, I liked that tea, either coffee pot or teapot too, but I did leave that behind because it was just by itself. There's no creamer or sugar. And there's a travel bartending set. Really neat stuff. I'm, I've just been, I've been trying to show you guys as much as I can of the shop. So there's some primitives in here um, with the ice hooks and, or bale hooks. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. And can we look at the lighting in the kitchen? I mean, look at that. That is stained glass and it's only 50 bucks. I mean, it is so cool <laughs> i mean it it would never fit in my house it's way too big but i i think it's might be faux stained glass though now that i'm looking a little closer at it i believe those are painted panels but it does need to be rewired it seems like and also look at that clock it's so cute <laughs> it's a little, it looks like a tiffany style swag <laughs> pendant so cute Oh, and yes, I see the owl. It is a Westmoreland toothpick holder. I got that. I did buy that. 
super cute little guy. Um, looking at the shakers, seeing if there's anything that really stands out to me. Um, but a lot of these I've actually really kind of had and sold or actually currently have in my inventory. And then going up the stairs into the second story, he has vases and crocs and things all lining the stairs. So, of course, you have to stop and kind of take a peek. Um, with the damage that's on this one, it's a really neat vase. If it didn't have the damage, I might have picked it up. But with the two chips that are on the rim, it's just... I just couldn't make myself take it. And look at that wall hanging. So cool. I mean, there's no way I could have shipped that. And that's a fantastic price for it. And some of the prints. And can we look at that mirror that I completely missed? Ah, oh, Epic chair room. Okay. <laughs> can we just like look in awe of this room <laughs> for just a minute if you need chairs you know where to find them now here's a victorian cross stitch very cool but it doesn't look like it's quite finished and i don't really know the market on those but still really cool some frames look at the sil the faux silver art deco frames again really good price but i just don't know what they're going for right now been a long time since I've looked them up. Some more painting and artwork. Bed frames. That iron one was really cool. Look at the hats. I like that hat rack too. And this is, the, I believe, like basically like a fashion room. You walk in and there's doilies and things and vintage clothes and purses and ties and a few little things on the shelf. A hair dryer. <laughs> It's almost like this is the girly room that he didn't know what to do with. So he just got to put it all in there. <laughs> and then this is clear glass, some milk glass, and records. And with also some ephemera in the back corner, too. And I completely missed those Viking tumblers. I did not see them. My eye just skated right over them and didn't even, I didn't see them at all. But there they are right there. I, I don't even know what they went for. I did purchase this piece, though. Um, I looked at it super close in the store. I 100% thought it had zero damage because I looked so hard at this thing. But this room was a little on the dim side, so I'm looking at uh, everything just by the window. And there was uh, several chips on the lid and one chip on the base. That was right around the edge. Um, but it is actually a rare size of this compo. It's like the middle size. It wasn't the really tall one. It wasn't the really little one. This vase, I didn't buy it because it was $18. And I just had no idea. I mean, look at that vase. It doesn't scream Murano to me. But the shape was like... What? With the silver flex. Oh, hello, creepy leprechaun bank. Moving on. <laughs> um, it's just that vase like, just gave me fits, so I ended up leaving it behind. I stared at it for way too long, and I didn't even see those hollow-stemmed champagne glasses. I walked right past them. So, like I said, I have to go back. And actually, you see that Decoration USA book down in the left-hand corner when I was panning through? I did purchase that. It was a 1960s decor, um, modern decor book. And it's, oh, it's epic, the pictures inside. I'll have to show you guys one day. I purchased that for me. And like I said, there's a little bit of everything in this place. So he has some glass uh, lighting shades. I didn't even look at any of the brass candlesticks. I'm kind of kicking myself for that. But, like, I was on a mission to just look at everything in this place. All right. So, Serendipity was a great stop. Um, all of that I got for $50. He really... Um, I didn't even ask for a discount. But I came up to the counter. He looked at what the prices were. And he's like, mm, no, it's 50 bucks sound. So, <laughs> honestly... Highly recommend stopping there. It's been way too long since I've been in, so I'm gonna try and make it a point to stop in whenever I can. But um, 
it's at the end of the day now. It's about five o'clock and it's time to head back home. So that's all I have for you today. And if you like coming along on my adventures, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.